I want to see it on the other side. Great, streaming is online. <coughs> Let me start here the recording and then I give the word to Mariam to introduce you to the audience. Will you speak in English or Spanish? I'll try to speak in English with my special English. <laughs> Great. Great. Okay. Okay. Maria, okay. the word to you. Thank you, Stefano. Hello, everybody. This is the, the second workshop for today and the first in the afternoon. Uh, I have the pleasure to introduce you David Ruiz. Uh, he is a, a teacher at the Infant and Primary School Cantica that is placed in Arroyo de la Encomienda, which is a little town close to the city of Valladolid in Spain. He's also the author of the Mr. Ruiz blogs uh, on education, where he shares ICT experiences, active methodologies, proposals. He also shares a smart presentation he has prepared on gamification and strategies for distance education. Uh, in the presentation today on his workshop, we, are all, we will have the opportunity to approach to the use of gamification and gay-based learning in primary education, including tools, strategies, and examples. So with a great pleasure also, I give the word to you, David, who can start. Thank you, Marian. Hello to everyone. My name is David Riff, uh, Marian says, and I work as a teacher in a primary education school in Spain uh, with a wonderful third year group, a new group for this year, and they are great. Um, first of all, I want to uh, start by apologizing for my slow English level, my low English level. Uh, but I'm not an English teacher, so uh, I try to do my best. Uh, I think a translation is going to slow down the presentation pace, and I try to do with my little English. I'm sorry if it's not so good. Oh, okay. thank you. Secondly, I want to thank to the project partners uh, for giving me this opportunity to, to participate in this final multiplier event. Special thanks to Mariam, uh, because I know she has worked a lot for this uh, event. And finally, we have, uh, we have not the opportunity to do it face-to-face. -face. I would love to make the face-to-face -face mm -hmm. event. And I would be glad to show my CD to my friends, Stefano, Elena, Iglica, Bojan, Jurgita, and all the team. So. We have to do that way, uh, this way, and I hope you are all fine. You are full of health, full of energy, and we can meet soon. And um, okay, let's play. Let's uh, begin. I'm going to talk now about uh, games and education. So I'm going to share my screen. You can watch it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, okay. okay. let's begin. Games and education. Um, uh, first, I'm going to say you all will have the link for this presentation. You can watch it after quietly because it has a lot of links on more information and we only have only, for me, one hour speaking in English is too much, but <laughs> we only have one hour to speak and, and I have to uh, make this presentation with more information for you. Um, let's start then. Uh, the title of the presentation is what I learned it from games to boost motivation in the classroom. I think motivation is quite quite an uh, important thing in education because uh, a student who is motivated is uh, more easier to, to get a deep learning as it's prepared. And more in these times, which school is not so fun as the last year because they have to here in spain and all over the world they have to have be quiet not to touch they have to wear the mask and it's a little bit uh, sad and i think now it's important to have a fun school uh, well here is the table of contents 
I don't know if it's uh, so loud. I will begin with by uh, speaking about uh, learning and by playing. Why I think uh, playing is, uh, okay, I, I will pass this because I don't know if you hear me well. Uh, uh, I will begin uh, s explaining why I think uh, games are good for learning and how we learn by playing. Then I will speak about the two main ways to use games in education, which are uh, game-based learning and gamification. And finally, we will see some examples. I think it's the most, uh, uh, maybe the most uh, important part of the presentation. Uh, some examples uh, with gamifications I have made with my students. Um, okay. Learning my plane. We start uh, learning when we are babies, and everybody knows is the, the the natural way we have to to learn things by playing. But this unfortunately doesn't last too long, because uh, in the moment of our life uh, we stop, we cut with this uh, good and healthy habit, and we start to um, different uh, to to have a different uh, moment to play and to learn. Okay, what, what, when is this, when appears this uh, moment for me, the first day we enter school is the first day we begin, somebody tell us, okay, let's study, let's learn, let's do a serious thing or let's play, let's enjoy. But you are not learning because you are playing and playing is funny and studying and learning is a serious thing. And I think this is a, a big mistake. Um, this is uh, worse when the student became older. The older student, the fewest funny moments, uh, funny times the, he, or he or she has in the school. So uh, for me, this is a mistake because uh, fun is very good for learning. Uh, our brain, uh, the, several studies has a, um, so our brain functions uh, and learn better when it's in, in a funny environment because uh, when you have fun it's uh, it's known your brain uh, your neurotransmitters are stimulated as dopamine endorphins as um, you have here a, a very good link if you uh, click on the brain you have a link interesting link about neurotransmitters and gamification or even uh, fun. When you are in a fun environment, your brain is quite uh, better prepared to, to learn, but we don't have time enough to speak about this. This for me is important. Funny is not the opposite of serious. Uh, for me, the opposite of serious uh, or funny is boring, not serious. You can, you can be in a, enjoying, you can be in a fun environment, in a fun activity, but you uh, still are serious and you are learning. Okay. Okay, what, what can I learn uh, for me? If I think it's uh, important to, to my classes to make a fun, a fun environment, where can I learn about creating this funny environment? And um, for me, the solution, uh, could be games, learn about games, why games are so funny for everybody and use this in education. And how can we use uh, what games uh, show us? How can we use it in education? For me, I are two main ways to use uh, games in education. One is game-based learning and the other is gamification. And um, there are more. For example, um, there are uh, games, I, I don't remember now, but I, I, there are more ways to use gamification, okay, or games in, in education. Okay, we, we will begin for, with uh, game-based learning. Game-based learning is uh, the use of actual games with educational objectives. These uh, games could be existing board games, video games, escape rooms, uh, games which are not um, make for educational objectives, but uh, you use in education, or 
specifically created ones. I mean, games you make to use in education. And both are game-based learning, but are different. These two options could be, you, you could um, learn more about it here in these links. Game-based learning, as what I have said, to use the use existing, already existing games in education. Um, sorry. And serious games, the difference is a serious games is made with an educational objective. So if, if you create a game for your class with a, a, a only educational objectives, you are using serious games. I don't mind if you use one or the other. The main thing is they are useful for you, or especially for your students. Let's uh, see three examples of uh, game-based learning. The uh, first one is this, uh, using the um, games as a center of interest. Uh, this is a unit, a project I have made with my class three years ago with a fourth year group. And the project is called uh, Board Game Experts. And it's a, for me a complete uh, project based on games, but with educational uh, objectives. And this link, you can watch all the, the project. So the project consists on several things. First of all, they know the project, they have uh, all the details and the rubric, and then each group select uh, one board game. They select one from a collection I have. I have a, a huge collection of, of games. And when they select the game, they play to the game only by reading the instructions. I don't help them anything. They read the instructions, they inter uh, interpret uh, the instructions, and then I take away the instruction from each group and, sorry, oh, okay. And they have to make their own instructions. They are working our curriculum or language. And they have made instructions for the game. You could uh, watch it there. This uh, ability to work, to work as a group and to make instructions thinking on the other, having empathy with the, the other person who is going to learn how to play this board game is one of the objectives in language education. It's an instructional text. Then with these instructions begin the fun because they have to teach other pupils from the school older pupils from the school who are invited to our class and each group has to teach the other pupils how to play this game. So they have to interpret the instructions and think on the other uh, uh, partner to explain them how to play. For me, it's a very good ability. And it's, going, it's uh, funny games, funny moments for us. These are the groups, they are reading the instructions, interpreting in, uh, they are now, they then make the instructions and they try to teach other pupils. I think I have a photo, an image. Okay, I don't mind. But the second um, step is to teach other person or people and these people is a special people for them because I, I we invite parents and grandpas to our class and my students teach their parents their grandpas how to play this board game with their own instructions and these are very 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 funny moments i don't know if i have a video or an image for here with the parents who were uh, the most delighted, yeah, here, here are parents, they are playing with them, and this makes the project very significant for them. The next step, because it's a long project, is an individual uh, activity. Each student has to prepare 
their own review from its uh, from their game. It's not a question of explaining how to play. It's a question of explaining why I recommend you this game and uh, how I recommend you to play to this game. And each student has a, a record, their own podcast, and explain. Uh, what is the game and why they love it. And the final uh, step in the project, the final activity, is to make, as a YouTuber, to make a video tutorial. And this is a complex uh, team activity because they have to um, organize the video, prepare it, and think on the people who is uh, watching this video. And the videos are great, we have no time to watch it because they prepare all things to explain the games, how to play, and they, uh, they make an, exa an example of a play who is prepared for people to know how to play. Okay, this is an example uh, of using games, board games in that case, to explain, uh, to work language uh, objectives. Other game-based learning, based learning examples are this breakout edu and escape room, which are so fashionable, fashion, fashionable uh, last days. And escape room uh, and breakout edu is the same. The only difference is in escape room you try to to escape from a room, and in a breakout edu you you only need to open a box. I prefer to open a box because it's an less um, stressing for our students. And these are great activities because uh, they make better uh, relationships within the group because all class has to work together and to share information to solve a problem, which is you are in a room or you need to open a box. So uh, here you have some examples, of a lot, but this is one example I've made in the Magic School. I'm going to show you later. It's an escape room. If you, if you click on this, you could watch the real example. Yeah, it's escape from Ringots. Old class has this presentation. This is our page of the Magic School with several parts. Oh, okay, it's uh, a little bit slow. But not, I could begin the further. Okay, after I will try it again. And this is a Caperofita La Carrera. It's a, a, a escape room, a breakout I prepare for a book celebration for all the school. And even we, we use it uh, with several schools in Spain, around Spain, because it's made for the pandemic um, lockout and students play from their houses. If you want to watch it, it's in Spanish, but uh, you click on the link and it's a, a run. Caperufita, it's a little red hood. I don't know the name in English. The red hood and uh, the wolf. I know. I I think you know everything. This uh, this story, and they have to make. Okay, okay they have to to help both for the wolf or Caperufita to reach the grandma house uh, before the other. And there are levels for five, and five levels from three years to 99. Each level has different uh, challenge, challenges. And you choose, for example, uh, second level. And there's two paths, the path from Little Red Hood and the path for the wolf. And each path, when you solve the first problem, you have a key to open the second problem. Then you, you get the key for the third and the fourth problem. And finally you got the grandma's 
house and win or or finish. Okay. Let's see this. It's not a question. And the last example for escape room, some of you, I'm sure, remember it. It's an escape room we prepared for the event in Panevechi, Lithuania. And teachers have the opportunity to, to experiment it uh, in their skin. And finally, this, in, uh, this is something fashionable here, fashionable here in Spain, it's trendy, because RPG, it's role play games. Um, are trendy because uh, teachers have beginning to have begun to prepare their own games. And here it's an example. It's not mine. It's for another teacher in, in Spain. They are games to the pupils to play and learn playing. Okay. This is the author, Jorge. And it's a similar game than video games. Have a, they have a mission. Okay. And they have to visit uh, the characters, talk with them, and solve the mission. Sorry. And solve the mission while learning. This is in English. English language uh, example. They have to review some contents on um, maps, I think. I don't know. I'm not an English teacher. So you visit the different uh, characters and you go throughout the map watching for objects and missions. Okay. This is another example of game based learning. Okay. And what about gamification? Gamification is a different one. It's a complex uh, and powerful strategy uh, based on games too. And now you are not going to use games as itself. You are going to choose some elements from games and you will use it in another thing, which is not a game. This, is, has, this has not... Um, uh, educational origin. The origin is in, in business uh, world. They use games elements to engage um, uh, people to buy their products, for example. There are a lot, there are a huge uh, amount of definitions. And if you have a, do a research or bibliography, you could um, find some as this. But for me, the easiest one is mine, so it's easy. For me, gamification is the art of adding to situations that are not games. This is important. It's not a game. Some of the elements that make everybody love playing. So we have to know what makes everybody love games. And then when you know which elements make them so funny, use them in another context. Which elements are the what uh, make us love games? Uh, the most important are four: are the mechanics, the dynamics, the aesthetics, and narrative. Here you have a long explanation from each one, but I prefer to pass quickly and stand more in the examples. Briefly, dynamics, it's what the player feels in the development of the game. Uh, this is our objective, our, our main objective. We want our students to feel something. And from these feelings, we got our objectives. So this is the first thing I have to think on. And what dynamics are uh, we, uh, we find on games? For example, we find the games dynamics as self-expression, as rewards, which is easy to explain, status, it's important for, for students or for the players to feel as an important one, uh, the first of the of the class, the second in the in the um, um, seventh uh, position. You have dynamics, 
as uh, competition, collaboration, but altruism to uh, recognition. Competition could be world, uh, a bad thing in education, especially um, primary education, but if you make, the, make them to know how to compete in a, a fair way, I think it's an interesting thing to use and to get an advantage from this. And collaboration is one of my favorite dynamics when I prepare a gamification. And I love, and we will speak about this after, I love to use the dynamic of altruism. And some activities from my gamifications, the students, the players, uh, give a present to other players. They don't win anything by doing this, but they feel fine when they give a present to other friends. And this is a, a big opportunity to work on this. And uh, as for the mechanics, the mechanics are, are what the player has to do, what the player, what the student do in the game. They have to feel a good status or they have to film the dynamic of altruism but what have uh, he or she to do to feel this okay but the dynamic uh, dynamics are related with mechanics and there are a mechanic for each dynamic for example collections as uh, they do in their uh, normal life they they love to make collections points it's a mechanic they could earn points and then they could do things with these uh, points levels they love to be in the next level this uh, morning one of my students have reached a new level it's a stupid thing she only have 10 points more than yesterday but she has a new level in the Minion laboratory, laboratory. So that's good for her, for them, and you can take an advantages of these levels. Maybe rankings leaderboard. This is um, for me something you have to you have to do with care, because because if you put a list with all your students ordered um, uh, with the points each one has, the most points student and the, the less points student, maybe you are making a, a bad thing with them because the students with the less points are not only not motivated, but demotivated. The, the and this lack of motivation is very hard for them. So you, you can put only the free more uh, with more points students, the five with more points students, the two team with more points, but not all the list. For example, aesthetics. Sorry. Aesthetics are so important. You think, you maybe think aesthetics are not important. Important are the mechanics or the aesthetics, or sorry, of the dynamics. But it's important when we are competing with uh, video games, with uh, Minecraft, with Fortnite, with some games they love and have a beautiful images, beautiful graphics. And uh, we are using an uh, old version with a Windows XP. And for them, this is not uh, so funny. This is not so interesting. And I'm not an artist, but there are tools that allow you to prepare things, prepare um, beautiful, aesthetically beautiful uh, objects. So as the other um, main element on, from games, and for me, the most important one is the narrative. The narrative is a story. The narrative is the, the the one that will most influence the success or not of your gamification. A good story is the best. You can have beautiful graphics, beautiful uh, elements. You, have, you can have a good dynamics and mechanics uh, group, but if you don't have an interesting narrative, this not, doesn't look as a game for them. 
they 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 think is they are working they are not playing this game narrative is quite important and we have um, reached the examples what i think is the best way to to start to take a look of what i'm uh, talking to you about gamification and maybe somebody who is watching this uh, video says this man is crazy how what is he talking about okay but, uh, well watching examples maybe i could explain better because in english it's difficult for me really yeah you have some of my examples they are gamifications perform it and develop it by me and my students the uh, the upper row is a um, gamification with students in primary school and the down uh, row is um, gamifications with with teachers for teacher uh, teacher training okay about uh, on gamification the first one school or detective school is for um, example for um, uh, first year uh, students four years ago i think three years ago and it's a good sample i think uh, on narrative this is a quite easy gamification they are a, a group this group with a low low level of attention they are good students they are they have a very good behavior i don't want to have an impact uh, on their behavior i i want i want them to be more uh, with more attention in class so i i think on a story and this is only a story i tell them they we have in our in our village a problem because somebody is stealing or um, things on the this is the mayor of the the real mayor of the of the village and somebody we don't know why or who is stealing things from the village and uh, they have discovered that these uh, robbers are kids so we need detective kids to to find the robbers and the, the principal from the school which is me uh, this year was me uh, says don't worry i have a class who can um search these uh, robbers these uh, stealers and i will train it and i train them doing the same things the same exercises uh, finding wally for example sudokus for example i want to them to perform to improve their their attention uh, career then the story continues but we don't have time to watch it uh, completely it's quite easy only a question of being uh, with attention and in class this is a new experience superhero school it's in spanish obviously and this is an example of statics they are a new class they are a fourth year class and i want to improve their their group um, feelings and I want them to work as a team, as a new team, because they don't know each other. It's a new group. And sorry, this is not the, the link. It's this. Superhero, superhero school. Ah, now. Okay. This is this is the block, and this has a, a new element. They earn points with their behavior, with their work, and then they can do something with this point. They can buy cards, special cards, which uh, give them some superpowers. I think here I have the cards. No, it's maybe there. Just a minute. Where are the cards? And these cards, uh, 
here. Sorry. I will close these windows. These cards have superpowers for them, and especially interesting are cards that has superpowers for all the class. So a student work hard, a student have a good behavior to win points, and then he or she spend these points to invite their partners, their uh, colleagues, to a superpower, such as a half an hour playing games in the, in the playground, for example. Or we have this card, which is uh, fantastic because it's called Super Brothers, and the student who buy this card have the opportunity to pass one hour in the in his uh, brother's class, and this is a lovely card for them. Okay. Now, Let's watch. And the next year, I made a new gamification with this same class, but in fifth year which is called Magic School. It's related to Hogwarts, and it's a more complex gamification. My uh, recommendation for the teachers who want to start uh, making gamification with the class to begin with something simple. This is a complex gamification because they have had another the year before. So they have here cards and they have a, a stranger rules. But the most interesting thing from this gamification, in my opinion, is this owl with the mail from Hogwarts. The story is about Hogwarts is related with Spain. And we have a, a direct connection with Dumbledore. And he sent us a new card each week. Here you have the cards, and on the cards they have challenges they have to to solve in a team uh, with teamwork. And the challenges are so different from different areas and with different tasks. So, for example, we have a challenge of drawing, a challenge with a breakout and escape room as this. We have a challenge of languages or seeking, uh, searching things in a map. Um, each week they win points as a team. And there is a classification, but it's not an individual one. Classification, sorry. It's a team classification, and each team win the points they, the members win each one. So it's interesting for them to work as a team, to work as a, as a group. Here you have the students, for example, that's, which are uh, in groups all day. They are grouped in different houses, the same as in Hogwarts. And I have arrived my, uh, my nowadays gamification, which we have, recently uh, begun, which is the Minion Lab. I have a new group, you know, and I said them, here is the video, that the Billion group is uh, trying to help the humanity with the COVID and he has uh, led the Dominions to work together with uh, her friend, uh, Dr. Nefario, and they are searching for a vaccine for the COVID. And they are searching in different laboratories. Have a lot of pages open, I think. Okay. They have here the trailer and Gru is a billion and say, uh, he uh, still say, uh, send a message each week to our students and this matches contains a challenge to solve during the week, similar to the, um, uh, the previous gamification. They have a group classification too. They win points, so it's slow. 
Victorian. I wanted to discuss it. These are my minions. These are the, the points of experience, their lives, their money. With this money, they, they buy cards for them or for the world class. Okay. And they have a, their level. But I want you to watch something which is here, but it's not functioning. So I'll try. I'll try sorry. Well, okay, maybe later. Uh, here are three gamifications to explain how gamification functions to teachers. This is Mr. Reeves in travel. This is in English. You can read it perfectly. El informe G is um, in Spanish. And this dimension, Ruffini, is in English too. And it's a complete website in which you could uh, advance from one room to the other by solving puzzles and uh, learning at the same time about gamification. So if you go to the library, you have to put the key. The key is 1,975. Yes. And when you open this room, you have some information about gamification, the presentation, and finally, you have two puzzles. If you solve these two riddles, you will have the next key to the next room. Each room explains a part of gamification. And finally, you go to the office and you meet the Professor Ruffini and you save him. It's a game and during the game you are learning. Let's try this again. And that was not uh, possible. I go for all the place. Okay, let's see there. Maybe here I have the same. But it doesn't function to. Okay, sorry. Okay. These are examples from other teachers, Spanish teachers, which are, in my opinion, especially interesting. Uh, this COVID fighters is a uh, work between two teachers. They are students in both two schools in Spain and different cities are working together to uh, find a solution for the COVID pandemic. And they had different missions here, for example, in the map. They had different missions. They have to, to solve one and then the other. But I have the same problem because it's made with the same tool. Here are the missions, China, South Korea, Iran, Italy, United States, and Spain. Each mission is different and they have to complete them one and then the other. Oh, example here. Okay. Now I've lost my presentation. It's here again. Sorry. Uh, 28 more or less. Oof. Was near. Okay, I'm here. I have been there watching COVID fighters. This Pixar maps is another gamification for a Spanish teacher, or maps, of, of course. And it's based, the aesthetics are based on the Pixar films. The students have words to visit, and each word they visit have a different content on maps. For example, let's watch uh, The Incredibles. In this war, they have a first uh, challenge, but the first level, and when they 
solve this level, they have a key to the next level and the next level and the next level. But you're not watching it because they have a kind of bold and they have here a representation, but it's not functioning. Mm. Okay, Super Mario is cool, it's uh, similar. Some biology, it's interesting because it's a secondary teacher, um, biology, I think. Uh, and all his uh, subject is made a zombie apocalypse. But the connection, it is it's not good. It's a pity. Okay, let's uh, continue then. And no digital tool is needed to create a successful gamification, but anyway, uh, they can be useful to allow you prepare aesthetically fine elements and um, it um, helps you to spend less time. I will show some of my favorites, but I, there are lots of uh, tools, digital tools for gamification. But for me, it's important to say they are not uh, essential. You can make a gamification without any digital tool. Avatarmaker.com is for making avatars. Make badges is for making this kind of uh, shells, badges. Bitmoji is the tool which, uh, with, um, with which I have made these uh, characters. False blue card generator and hellstone are cards tool to make cards. Incarnate is a wonderful tool to create fantastic maps, or I recommend this only, um, only for lesser. It's a very, very nice tool. Have um, tools to prepare a countdown or an online stopwatch with a, a funny appearance. Fluky is to make a wheel with a random selection. Kahoot is well known. It's a, Quiz uh, page, quizzes is for me better than Kahoot and it's for the same use. And if you, if your students don't have uh, tablets or digital uh, or laptops, you can use Plickers, which is the same or similar, but uh, they use uh, QR codes, uh, printed codes to answer the questions. It's like magic. I don't like too much because I have the, I'm lucky and my students have uh, everyone a laptop or a tablet but i know i'm happy i'm lucky with that yeah we have more tools some of them are so interesting class dojo is well known all over the world uh, related with gamification but i don't like it too much because it's based only on points only on good points bad points good points bad points and I don't like it too much. Uh, Classcraft is similar to Class Dojo, but with an, uh, different uh, aesthetics, more for, for older students, in my opinion. Genially is the fantastic tool which uh, I have used to make this presentation and uh, almost all my presentation, and you can do with, them, with it uh, presentations, infographics, uh, interactive images. For me, it's a wonderful tool I use every day. I think. Deck Toys is a fantastic tool to prepare a kind of video games in an easy way. You can uh, um, enter an image and you mark a pace, a path, sorry, a path for the students and they have to go for the path. World World, if you don't know it, World World or learning apps are webs that uh, let you prepare uh, funny games with uh, the contents you have uh, study in class. And they can play from a mobile phone, from a tablet, from a uh, quite a um, tool. Okay, and my class game is the, the tool I have used to, to put the minions, the experience, the points. It's a very, very good one uh, for me. Uh, I hope it functions now. If I have a good connection, here are the four third grade classes, four third grade laboratories in our school. This is mine. And you have not only all your minions, all your students, with their points, etc., but 
um, other tools, other tools you can use, for example, here. You can use to have a random event and I can have a random event. I prepare for them an escape room, good luck. And they could buy a card to me to launch a random event. And this is quite uh, motivating for them. You can do from here a quiz um, and a lot, a lot of things. Okay. And I think I have some more to tell you. If you want to prepare your first gamification or your second, and you want some tips, uh, I have here 10 tips to you in English, you can read it quietly. And here you have an infographic a path, the gamification, the gamification path to uh, prepare your first gamification. You can reuse this uh, genially and prepare your own gamification with my recommendations. And summing up, let's remember that we have learned about the use of games and education and there are three principal or three main ways to, to use games in a school. The other one I want to, I wanted to say the, before is uh, game thinking, but it's more, uh, more complex to explain. Uh, the, the main ones I have talked about are game-based learnings, the use of existing games in, in education, the other one I've uh, talked about is um, the serious games, games you have or other people have prepared specially, specifically to education with an educational objective. And finally, my favorite too is gamification, uh, which consists on pick elements from games, which make your activities funnier, and um, engaging and using another context, which is not a, a game, uh, such as, for example, education. So, if you got, if you, if you have any question, uh, I don't know if we can answer it here, or if not, don't worry. I will share now my blog and my Twitter account, and you can ask me these questions and when when I have a second free, sometimes I have, uh, I, I, I answer your questions, okay? And finally, you have here a short link to this presentation, which have tons of links and more information and the links uh, that uh, we can't uh, watch today because of the, the Wi-Fi. I suppose my Wi-Fi, uh, you can watch them after. If you write this on your browser and click enter, you go to this, uh, to this uh, presentation. And I suppose in the web of the project, you could uh, put a link too. And even if you want to scan this QR code, you could go to this presentation too. And for me, that's all, game over. And this is my blog www.elblogdelsenorruiz.com that way and here down you have my twitter account which is uh, don david ruiz if you link this you pick uh, click this you can go to my twitter account um, that's all we don't have a very good connection today <laughs> sorry for that thank you to everybody thank you marian thank you stefano elena I don't watch everybody there. But maybe I, I maybe you, you need to <clears throat> to take out. Yeah. <clears throat> I I stop uh, share my screen, and maybe I can oh. watch everybody. Jurgita, no, Renata, are here. Yeah. <laughs> Renata is here. Yeah, yeah. I want I want to watch everybody. No, ah, yes. So, somebody, oh. alguien quiere hacer alguna okay. pregunta? Somebody yes. Would like to yes, make a question. I think you are very clear or 
and, and they will have a lot of information. I'm sure not. <laughs> yeah. To go deeper during the presentation, I think. It's very difficult for me to speak, speak English. No, but, but the example. <laughs> The examples are helpful, I yeah. think. No, it's been very interesting. And uh, yes, there are a lot of examples and practical examples that the teachers can, uh, can use. Uh, you gave a lot of hints and ideas. Uh, it's been great. Uh, moving you, and funny, fu funny, but not boring. Absolutely. That's so, uh, it was yeah. very interesting, this distinction, because we know okay. how sometimes for the teachers is uh, complicated to also start yes. to think, to put some yeah. fun games yeah. in their lessons because they start to think, oh no, it would be, uh, they will think that we are just playing and not learning. But uh, yes, yeah, this is but once you start, you understand how, yeah. how can you yeah. learn through the yes. game. Yes, yesterday, Antonio said, uh, sometimes, uh, Antonio is my colleague, Antonio Marquez, who speaks, uh, yeah. Uh, spoke yesterday and he said uh, um, sometimes uh, teachers says my students are not motivated and you never think about what are you doing to be motivating or your activities to be motivating and I think this is uh, quite quite uh, good because if you have your students attention your students are engaged your students are motivated they are I'm sure they are getting deep learning and really interesting learning. So that is interesting gamification for me on game-based learning. I think it's motivating also for the teacher. Yes, yes. Because if, if you yes, do boring yes. things, yes, you yes, get yes, bored yes, and you yes, bore, yes. you know, the, you, you yes. bring boring also the, the students. So yes. if you play games, uh, you know, love what you're doing and be passionate and be, you know, uh, so how motivated is the first thing for yes. a teacher to, to, to me, have uh, students following him or yes. her? For me, it's such motivating to learn new things, always new things. Uh, to learn new things is very motivating for me. But uh, this kind of things, even when you don't like technology, because uh, some teacher says to me, this is all about technology and, and, and tablets and I don't like this thing. This is not about technology. This is, not, uh, this is about the strategies to make your to 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 make a funny environment, and this funny environment is good for your pupils and it's good for you. When they are engaged, it's so easy to learn. It's so easy to you. It's so hard to teach a pupil which is not engaged at all. Is not the involved in what uh, he's learning. It's impossible. It's impossible. They are they are worried about things they have at home. And they come at school and it's a boring thing too. And for me, this kind of games or gamification could make them easier to learn new things. And in the way you're using, you know, in a cooperative way and, uh, and yeah, being very pro-social. So that's yeah. a very good yeah. thing for, for, for teaching for sociality. Uh, as for pro-social, there's something I, I, I do every from the school of magic and this uh, minion laboratory this is something i, I love the the the, the, one, the activity i most love of all on fridays the last uh, class we do an assembly and uh, each uh, student who wants give a present give points to other student for a reason i want to give uh, 15 points to Elena because this week she uh, have been with me all break when I am alone and this is the most um, best feelings in my gamification and for them everybody um, have a present I have the opportunity of of uh, of be grateful with other uh, with other um, students and this is Fantastic. All the week is, is worthy only for this 30, 40 minutes or 40 minutes. Sorry. Great. Great idea. Renata, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. I like your work style very much. And I hope to see you in Panevegis one more time to share yes. your experience. <laughs> I will love it. <laughs> yes, yes. 
And I think it's also very important, David, uh, that you are sharing all these uh, things you are already made mm -hmm. for free in your blog. So yes, I, yes. I invite everybody to have a look uh, because he shared all his work and knowledge uh, freely. That is also one of our social values or uh, ways yes, of, of yes. sharing. Because you are, and, yeah. because, you, because you are students, uh, learn more than who you are and what you make than what you say to them. So if you are uh, generous, I, I don't consider myself a generous teacher because I share everything, but I, I look for other teachers who serve. And for the students, it's something natural to share things. It's, it's for us adults uh, that we think, this is mine. I don't want anybody to spy my work. It's my work. It's done. I share. And if anybody could take an advantage of it, it's fantastic for me. That is uh, another reason why I, I, I wanted uh, you here making a presentation because yeah, yeah. the share of knowledge for free. Fantastic. Thank yes. you, David. Thank you. Okay. I think this is the end of the workshop. And next one will be at 6 p.m. with Freddy Lagbardi and Dr. Frank and some of the students. Uh, they are going to talk about why the world needs more women engineers, which is very interesting because we are losing more than half of the of the view over the the problems and the things we are facing in the world, and we need more women. And I think uh, their style also, communica communicative style, is going to engage you. I invite you to, to engage at 6 p.m. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.